Visualizing various ideas is my favorite part of making devlogs. I'd like to believe that it makes the presented topics a little bit easier to understand, and recently I switched from After Effects to my own animation software, tailored specifically for this sort of visualization. I call it Motion Canvas, and it allows me to animate using code. In short, we write the code in TypeScript, using an IDE of our choice, while the browser provides us with a real-time preview of our animation. It implements hot module replacement, meaning that any changes we make automatically update the preview. Meanwhile, the timeline can be used for synchronizing the animation with verbal cues. The rendering is also done by the browser. The Canvas API is used for vector graphics, WebGL for 3D scenes, and the WebCodex API for external videos. Before we go into more detail, let's talk about why we'd even want to make animations programmatically. Usually objects are animated in a declarative way. We say, at frame 10, this circle should be here. At frame 30, it should be there, and so on. The animation software then interpolates between these keyframes, producing movement. You might have seen it in After Effects, Blender, Unity, but when using code, we can start thinking about animation as a series of commands. We say, do nothing for 10 frames, then move the circle to the right in a span of 20 frames, and so on. This is a more imperative approach that closely mimics how code is written. And the most famous example of this is of course Manim. This imperative method makes controlling the timing of an animation surprisingly easy. With keyframes, if you want to change when a given event happens, you need to manually readjust all the following keyframes. But with commands, you only need to edit this one duration and the rest will follow. Another benefit is that we can use programming concepts to control the animation. We can use loops to create repetition, write functions for reusing common effects, or use external data to procedurally generate objects. With that out of the way, let's look at how Motion Canvas works. When initializing a project, I need to specify an array of scenes that I want to render. Each of them is a generator function that takes the root of the scene as an argument. Before we start animating, we need to create something to actually animate. The way we define the content of our scene is inspired by libraries such as React. For example, this is how I'd create an object node from my videos. It's a surface with a linear layout containing an icon and some text. The layout automatically places its children next to each other. This way, we don't need to manually define their positions. We can also extract this whole thing to a separate function, creating a reusable component. Anyway, let's start by adding a color picker in the middle of the scene. To animate it, we first need to create a reference. This is what it looks like, and now picker.value will point to our color picker. The way this generator function works is similar to coroutines in Unity. Using the yield keyword indicates the start of a new frame, so I can set the preview color to red, wait for the next frame, set it to blue, and so on. Now every frame, the color changes. But the power of generators comes from the ability to nest them. I'm gonna extract this code to a separate function, and call it from within our scene using this statement. Normally, the yield statement returns whatever value is on the right. But with yield star, if this value is another generator, it will sequentially yield every value from inside of it. So the resulting animation is exactly the same. Motion Canvas provides some useful functions that can be used this way. For instance, I can wait for a specific amount of time using wait for. Or I can animate the color picker appearing on the screen using show circle. But my personal favorite is the twin function. I need to specify the duration and an update function. Now, this value argument will go from 0 to 1 as the twin progresses. Here, I use it to animate the height of this preview rectangle. The twin function is great for orchestrating complex animations, but there's an easier way to animate individual properties. The exact same animation can be written like this. We pass the duration as a second argument to the setter, and it creates the twin for us. Notice that the size of our entire picker and the positions of these sliders change automatically. This is because before a frame is rendered, all layouts are recalculated. We can hook into this recalculation process to create all sorts of dynamic effects. For instance, pinned label uses it to follow its target. Here it will always stay right above the picker. Another important function is wait until. We use it to create an event that will appear on the timeline. Now we can drag it to adjust how long it should last. This is a huge time saver when synchronizing the animation with verbal cues. Instead of trying to guess the duration in code, we can use the waveform preview to align it perfectly. 
So far, we were running our animations sequentially, one command after the other. But let's say that we want to animate two different properties simultaneously. A code like this will first change the radius of a rectangle, and then change its color. However, we can alter that by removing the star from the sealed statement. This will instruct Motion Canvas to run this generator concurrently. You can think of it as spawning a separate thread. Now both the radius and the color will animate together. Yielding a generator this way returns a reference to it. We can then use it to join or cancel it. Joining essentially means pausing the current generator until the one we joined has finished. This is the low-level way, but some functions make it easier. For instance, we can use all, like this, to achieve the same effect. By the way, you might have noticed this little generator that we ran at the beginning of our scene. It's responsible for performing the scene transition. The default behavior is to simply cut to the current scene, but we can provide it with our own function that takes the previous and the next scene as arguments and animate them however we want. This is how we'd create a simple fade transition, for example. And since it's a function, we can of course declare it in a separate file and reuse it across multiple scenes. Alright, that would be the gist of it. This is more or less how I make animations for my devlogs. If you want to know more about Motion Canvas, I'll be streaming this Saturday going into more depth. There are still a few things I need to iron out before it's ready, but as part of their new benefit, the compute tiers on Patreon and memberships will be the first to use it. And then, once we deem it ready, I'll make it open source. So I'd love to hear if you'd be interested in using it. Thanks so much to all my supporters, thank you for watching, and until next time.